Hello everyone and welcome back to another Big Ambitions video. In the last video we covered the Mega Tech World store which we just built in the largest building available in game and we've been seeing some amazing results in terms of average daily income. In today's video we're going to continue on this beautiful trend and do some adjustments because I've seen that some of my businesses are not performing as well as they used to in the past. So I'm trying to revamp them by transforming them into electronic stores. So let's get started. So let's have a look at Bizman and check which ones of these businesses are the worst performing. So in my case, we have the after school, which is a nightclub, the coffee shop and two clothing stores. Now, since we've seen how good the electronic store has performed so far, I believe starting with the clothing store transformation would be best. So this one right here is a thousand square foot building, which is amazing and has pretty good traffic index as well, which leads me to believe that is going to be a perfect candidate for this transformation. And because we haven't done it yet, and I'm very curious about it, we're going to use the blueprint functionality and see what the game design is for an electronic store. So to do this is very simple. We just need to change it from a clothing store to an electronic store. And then we have to save the changes. Of course, we're going to name it Mega Tech World empty and also change the logo to something more appealing so let's go with this one now that it's all saved we need to reach out to our beloved interior installation firms we're gonna go to christian bahud and ask them to do a complete transformation i would love to see before i buy so we're just gonna have to go to the christian bahud which i believe is right here we're just gonna drive over there and check out in person in the preview screens they have in the offices, what this is looking like. So let's park it quickly and go across the street and check out what options we have. First of all, let's have a look at what the type of the building is. So it's an M1 type of building. It is a retail M1. And then business, it is an electronic store. So we have just the one design, which is modern. And this is what it looks like. Guys, I must say, this is pretty awesome. I never thought to have different floorings right where the tables are. But this looks pretty awesome. And I'm gonna go with it. Since we're here, we might as well just talk to this guy rather than speaking with them via messages. So Mega Tech World, next day, modern. It's gonna cost a bit of money at 832,000. But to be honest, it's kind of similar to the other stores. So clothing stores would be roughly in the same neighborhood. So I'm not surprised and I'm actually quite glad that it, they kept this same sort of pricing throughout the blueprints. So let's confirm they're going to sell all existing interior found in the building and subtract it from the total price, which is amazing. And that's pretty much it. So I'm thinking that after they sell everything that we have in there, uh, we're probably gonna save um, 150, 160K, uh, but we will see after midnight. And it has been completed. Let's have a look inside. This is amazing. Look at these uh, couches. They look really, really nice. And of course, none of the customers are uh, impressed because uh, we don't have items. We don't have anything. This store is open because I forgot to close it. That's the only reason why. Uh, so let's temporarily close it. Let's reorganize our schedule. So we got the security guard lockers, but I don't think we have enough. No, we do. We do have security as well. We take it from the previous um, previous store. Now, the problem that I have is that we have cashiers and not checkout counters. And I guess the reason why they went with cashiers is because they look nicer. And I'm not going to argue that. They are indeed looking a lot nicer than having checkout counters. Uh, there is a time and a place for each of those. This type of store is not one of them. I'm gonna admit it. I'm not particularly fond of the way it blends in with the environment because it's, it's not, it just stands out. Uh, I'm talking here about the checkout counter. And the cash registers are a lot better at that 
because you can place them on a modern cabinet, uh, put some plants around them, and all of a sudden you have this uh, nice environment. You're not affecting the overall look of your store with it. So uh, from that point of view, it's really nice. What I don't like about them is that you need more of them to reach the maximum limit of the store. So one checkout counter can do up to 30 people and one cashier, let's see. What do we have for cashiers? Cash registers can do 20. So yeah, that's the that's the drawback, but it's a give and take, right? You get less people, but you get a better looking store or you go for the optimization and go for the checkout counters and you have a slightly uglier store. But it's up to you, of course. I prefer the checkout counters whenever I can, but in this scenario, I have to agree with the game. It does look better. So we're just gonna leave it there. Okay, so we have perfect, perfect security. And as you can see, this is one thing I wanted to show you. The placement of your shifts will dictate how good or bad your security score is. If I scatter the employees around like this, you can see I got 72%. And that's only because uh, I'm overlapping at some point. So for a few hours in every day, I have two security guards on shift. But if I put two with two paired, you can see the score goes up to 100, perfect score. Even though for half of the day, basically, I don't have any security on site, on premise, it's still 100% because you have them paired. Now, if I go around here and I do this, because it's a larger gap, the average score goes down. If I move them across, it still goes down because you need to have security overnight. I believe that is the logic here. So I'm not going to play around with it too much. Uh, I just want it to be as good as we can get it. I'm happy with 72 and we're going to leave it at 72 because I want the whole day to be covered. The last thing we need to do is to talk to our logistic managers and ask them to make another stop on their way to the newly acquired, not acquired, but transformed building and drop us some stock as well. Okay, and now we're good to go. We are open. We have good security score. And these are the numbers from our previous uh, opening, which was a clothing store. We're gonna give it a few days and hopefully these will change. So as you can see, we're checking the inventory and they have made the delivery. So we have items everywhere just that some of the cash registers are out of paper. So let's have a look inside and see if that is the case for every single cash register. Tables are looking nice. So two of them are having paper and two of them don't. So let's see if we can rectify this. Turns out we cannot split that box of 998 paper bags. The only option we have is to go to sleep and allow the logistic managers to do another delivery of paper bags. And just after two days since we transitioned from being a clothing store to an electronic store, as you can see, we're reaching 38.4K. Pricing seems to be increasing as well, which is awesome to see. We have marketing campaigns going on, so we don't need to do anything else. And our customers over time are also reaching new peaks since we have changed to being an electronic store. I will consider this a success. So we need to continue with the other ones which are not doing that good. So the coffee shop is usually doing okay. We will never get rich from it. The profits it generates are minimal, but at least it's doing okay. I would like to transition this from a coffee shop to an electronic store, although I'm not quite sure if it's possible considering the size of the store. So looking at it, we have an A2. Let's give Christian Bahud a quick call and see if they allow buildings of A2 size to become an electronic store via the blueprint functionality because I would be very interested to see what the game's defaults are for a building of this size. So there are quite a few design choices. Of course, I don't know which design is referring exactly to the electronic store. I can only assume it is the modern one. But let's go ahead and have a look and check out for ourselves. And here we are at Christian Bahud again. Let's check out quickly if there is anything for a building of A1 type. 
And we do, we have a modern design for an electronic store of A1 size. And look at this, they actually did a good job pushing in as many tables as possible for our customers to enjoy. And you can see they also used again a cashier. I'm very happy with this design because it's uh, it's quite similar to what our coffee shop looks like at the moment. And instead of uh, product tables, there are actually round tables where people can serve coffee. So we will definitely go for this one and we'll check out what the profits are in a building that small. Thank you for watching part 1 of this video. Make sure you have the bell notifications turned on so you don't miss the release of part 2. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.